and our solution to acquire. Uh, I just hope I can control this slide. Okay, good. Yeah, I got this one. Okay, uh, this is a joint work with uh, Ethan, who is also here, and Kyle, Elaine, and uh, Ari. And we are all in the IC3 uh, initiative for cryptocurrency and contract. Uh, okay, so what is the smart contract? Uh, you have been heard a lot about smart contract. So uh, very briefly, a smart contract is a executable object on the blockchain. And it's usually programmed in some Turing complete languages, which means the code of smart contract can express basically arbitrarily rich functionalities. Uh, and most importantly, smart contract is self-enforcing. So just like you cannot stop a Bitcoin transaction, you cannot stop a smart contract from running. That is because the execution is, in is enforced by the entire network. Uh, one way to think and reason about smart contract at a higher level of abstraction is to see it as a virtual tr trusted third party, but with public state. And we found this, this abstraction useful, and I will use this throughout the presentation. And uh, also, I will use a running example, an example of flight delay insurance as an example for smart contract. So as its name suggests, a flight, insurance, a flight delay insurance works as follows. So the client can pay, for example, for $1 to insure her flight. And uh, if the flight is delayed, the insurance agency will pay back, for example, for $100. Sorry. So if we have a trusted third party, it is easy to implement such a policy. And luckily, a smart contract is, a, is such a party that we can trust for its integrity. So it sounds like we can just drop in a smart contract and we are good to go. Except this doesn't work. Okay, there are at least two reasons why this doesn't work. And I will... The most critical one is because an important... important piece of this uh, diagram is actually false. Namely, the blockchain is a self-contained object, so the smart contract running on it has no way to learn about the world that is external to the blockchain. So this flight insurance smart contract will have no way to learn whether a flight is delayed or not. And this is in, indeed a general problem, because you can imagine that all sorts of in, interesting smart contracts will need will need this data. And uh, more, furthermore, they will need trustworthy data, meaning the data has to be true, has to be meaningful. And unfortunately, today, there are simply no such good sources. People have proposed uh, several options. Uh, maybe the first option we have is prediction markets. But prediction markets, such as uh, Genosis, relies on human input. And therefore, it takes a long time for, uh, to reach a consensus on the right answer for a given, pro a given problem. And it is not ideal for data-driven and data-hungry smart contracts. Another well-known solution is Oracleized and other oracles. The problem with Oracleized actually is it has a strong trust assumption. You will have to rely on the reputation of small entities. And it can only provide you with raw data format raw HTTPS trans uh, transcript. And it cannot guarantee any confidentiality. It is also possible that uh, uh, big data brokers, such as big companies, will set up their own uh, data feed. Uh, but first of all, this ha hasn't happened yet. And even if this happens, we will probably have the problem of fragmentation, meaning you have to go to different sources for different, different information. And it's hard to say whether you will have any confidentiality in, in these services because uh, there's simply no one available yet. So none of the existing solutions is entirely satisfactory. 
That's why we introduced Town Crier, our system. What is the basic idea of Town Crier? So let's take a step back and think about, for example, what will us do if we need information such as whether a flight is delayed or not? I will probably just go to one of the websites and look it up. The reason why I trust, for example, flightaware.com is for its reputation. And people trust these websites for similar reasons. So the idea of Town Crier actually is to enable the smart contract to do the same thing. So the idea of Town Crier is to fetch the information from the website and deliver it, okay, deliver it to the smart contract. The guarantee we want, however, is to make sure that the information delivered by the smart con uh, delivered by Town Crier is exactly as served on the source website. We call this property authenticity. So how do we ensure this authenticity property? The main idea is to use trusted hardware, and Intel SGX in particular. Uh, a little background on Intel SGX. Uh, SGX is a uh, recently released uh, trusted the hardware technology from Intel. Uh, it implements a abstraction called the trusted execution environment. You can think of this trusted execution environment as a secure box or a so-called enclave for your program. Once your program X is running in this secure box, you will have nice guarantees. First off, you will have integrity guarantee, meaning the control flow of your program is will not be tampered with by any other software running on the same machine. You will also get confidentiality guarantee, meaning no one can observe the internal state of X. And another important functionality of SGX is remote attestation. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, attestation is a signature and there a secret key that is only known to the hardware. And the message being signed here is the program itself, along with some user data. So by verifying this attestation, a remote user can make sure that X is exactly that X is running on a genuine SGX platform. So with the help of this attestation mechanism, we can establish a secure channel with the remote SGX platform. The way to do this is to have X generate a pair of keys and publish the public key in the user data. Now this whole attestation becomes uh, a certificate for this public, public key. And by verifying this attestation, the user can make sure that th this public key is indeed generated by this program X. Okay, so let's actually talk about Town Crier. Town Crier works by answering queries from relying contracts. The security goal, of course, is to make sure that the answers to that query is always correct. And uh, we, in our model, we assume a quite permissive adversary model. We assume adversary actually controls the server of the Town Crier uh, service. It controls the operating system and all of the network stack. A simpler way to say this is the adversary controls everything outside of the enclave. Also, uh, although I want to point out here, uh, we, we still assume blockchain still works. Blockchain is not compromised by adversary. And the, the information source, the trusted website, is not compromised by the adversary, because that's where we started. Uh, we do have mechanisms to tolerate the information, the trusted website being compromised to some extent, but at some point we will have to trust the source because that's where we get the information and that's what we can do uh, to our best. Actually, the architecture is slightly more complicated than the picture I just showed because the Town Crier is a compound program. It has a off-chain part uh, in the secure enclave and it has an on-chain part, a Town Crier contract front end. So a relying contract will not directly contact with the enclave, rather it will contact uh, the uh, contract front end first, 
and the contract front end will relay requests and responses uh, back and forth. So very interestingly, we are dealing with a tripartite trust model. And each part of it has very unique property. The contract front end it is a smart contract, so the execution is trustworthy. However, it has no confidentiality, and the execution is expensive. Uh, as for Town Crier Enclave, the execution is also trustworthy, and, but here the computation is actually quite cheap because you run it on the CPU. The bad thing about Town Crier, uh, sorry, the bad thing about Enclave is it has no uh, network stack. The net network is, has to be controlled by the operating system, therefore by adversary. And for the trusted website, uh, we assume the source is authenticated, but even though the websites are HTTPS en enabled, it cannot assign the content directly. And I will talk more about this later. So the key challenge here is how can one stitch together these different trusted domains with such different properties into a secure and efficient system. And now I will describe how we address this uh, problem in Town Crier. Okay. Uh, well, this is slow. So uh, I want to show you that Town Crier is indeed a bridge of authenticity, or of authenticated data. So to do this, I will show you that each of these three arrows is sort of a authenticated channel, meaning the recipient of information through this arrow has a way to verify the integrity. Let's start it with this uh, simple one. Okay, this simple one. Uh, the question here is, how can a smart contract to make sure that this information, this piece of message is indeed from Tanquire, not from an arbitrary guy? The solution actually is simply to set up a secure channel to the remote enclave. And to do this, we use attestations. The creator of this smart contract will have to first verify that this attestation is indeed from Town Crier, this TC, and it, it is endorsing a public key. And after verifying that, uh, the creator will hardware this contract with the public key, and this, pu this contract will only accept uh, messages that is signed by the corresponding sec uh, secret key. The best part of this approach is this seemingly expensive signature verification thing actually comes for free, because it is done not by your smart contract, rather it is done by the blockchain. Blockchain needs to verify each incoming messages, and it verifies that for you. Okay, so now we have analyzed this arrow and I marked it as green because we believe now it's uh, authenticated. Okay, let's move on to the second one. So remember that Town Crier works by answering queries from relying contracts. So the front end will forward the queries and the Town Crier will send back answers. The problem here, however, is this queue might not be queue prime because an adversary is controlling the network. So one way to solve this is simply to run a full-fledged blockchain client in the enclave. And by doing so, we can verify Q prime is indeed part of the blockchain by verifying a sort of a Merkle tree structure. However, doing this will blow up the TCB side of uh, Town Crier because a uh, blockchain client is not a trivial piece of software and we don't want to do this. Our approach instead leverages this uh, hybrid trust model. We will use these three green arrows to deal with this red one. The way it works actually is pretty simple. So Town Crier will process this Q prime regardless whether it's compromised, it's corrupted or not. And in addition to send back uh, A prime, Town Crier will simply send back Q prime in addition. And it is a t contract responsibility to verify whether Q prime and Q are equal. If they are match, then just uh, send back the response. If they don't match, just uh, throw away, just like nothing happened. So by doing so, we, are, we now 
turn this red arrow into green. Okay, here we go. We are at the very last uh, chain. We're very last of this step. Uh, actually, as I just said, Enclave has no direct access to the, block, uh, to the uh, network, which means it has to go through a potential malicious OS to do all of the networking. And to make it worse, HTTPS actually doesn't sign the data directly. It maps the data, but Mac is not transferable, which means Tanquire has no way to verify the data delivered by OS. And to, in order to deal with this issue, we will have to put the entire TLS stack in the enclave. Like this. Sorry. Uh, yeah, like this. Uh, now the OS and the malicious network becomes a gigantic man in the middle. And by the security of TLS, man in the middle attack is not a problem. So in spite of the presence of this malicious network, we are still have, having a authenticated channel from Tanquire to the trusted website. Another interesting we ran into and explored in the design of uh, Tanquire is a uh, gas depletion problem. Recall that Ether will charge a, a fee called gas to run your program, and that is charged for um, prevention of DOS attack. And it is not cheap. It is actually quite ex expensive. So uh, in a smart contract, if you want to send a message to another smart contract, you need to make a function call, and making that call will incur some uh, gas cost. So the problem is Tanquire actually needs to make that call in order to return an answer. And so Tanquire must pay this gas cost. And it, at the same time, it has to make sure that this gas cost will not uh, exceed the gas limit, the current gas Tanquire is having. So the property we need to guarantee is, informally speaking, the Tanquire service will never run out of gas. So the service can run like 20, 24 times 7. And we formally define this uh, property name uh, called uh, gas uh, sustainability. And we prove that by charging a uh, deposit upfront, Tanquire service is uh, gas sustainable. I will refer uh, you to, the, to our paper for details of proof of definition, but the point I'm trying to make here is uh, gas sustainability is a fundamental and general availability prob uh, property for compound smart contract programs, such as this Tanquire one. And let's, let's have a look at the challenge of confidentiality. Because of the uh, publicity of the entire blockchain, smart contract has no secret uh, state. So the challenge is how can we provide confidentiality to data processed by a smart contract, even though the smart contract cannot hold any secret. Can we do this? The answer is yes. With the help of uh, uh, trusted hardware, we can, we can still achieve confidentiality. Here's an example why confidentiality is desirable. For example, you are using this, trust, this flight delay insurance. And the, to use this, you need to send your flight information to the blockchain, and, which means to the entire world. This is certainly not good, and you can think of worse. Uh, so what we can do with uh, Tanquire is actually you will instead send a encrypted version of your flight info to Tanquire. Uh, because Tanquire has a secret key, it can decrypt the flight info and the rest of protocol just to run as normal. And by doing so, you actually, uh, you, you actually are using Tanquire service, but without revealing any information about your uh, flight info. OK, I guess uh, that, is, uh, that is the end of my talk. So briefly summarize, uh, Tanquire is a authenticated data feed for smart contracts, and it has strong security guarantee, and has, you need, just need to make weak trust assumption. And it preserves confidentiality, and it can support customization, customize the data feed. And uh, we do have a launch plan for Tanquire. We will launch uh, it as a free service for Ethereum by the end of this year. 
and uh, uh, stay tuned. You will uh, soon to be able to use Time Prior. And uh, uh, this is, uh, I'm, fan, uh, I'm happy to take your question. Hey, um, my question is, uh, by using an enclave, don't you trust, trust Intel in the same way that uh, a smart contract with uh, software trusts Oracle eyes? Or uh, yes, you in the trust model. Oh yeah, you by using SGX, you 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 of course need to trust uh, uh, Intel. Uh, the question is, uh, we actually we do have that hesitation too. But if you, I mean, you think about it. Even if you're not using SGX, uh, you're prob probably still using uh, the CPU from Intel. Uh, so in that case, or maybe you're not using CPU, probably one of the trusted website is running on a CPU uh, powered by Intel. So uh, Intel uh, is indeed uh, uh, in this loop like anyway. So we choose to trust the, the hardware and make use of it. Hi, uh, this is Pratik from NUS. A uh, couple of questions. Number one, if the goal of Town Crier was just to get uh, data into the blockchain <coughs> securely, then one thing you could do is you could just use public cryptography. You didn't actually need to do an enclave because you know the site is trusted. So it could just digitally sign the content and the public key on the blockchain would be able to verify that the, that the data was okay. So number one I want to clarify is that you only need this if you want to tie the query with the results. or Otherwise, you don't really need Intel SGX. The second question I have is that, are you imagining a world where there'll be a, a very large number of distributed Intel SGX CPUs, which will have the same level of guarantees that you get from a blockchain uh, in terms of resilience in the distributed setting, for this to actually be, be practical and, and viable in the real? So are you imagining that to be the setup? Uh, so for the first question, uh, sorry, what was the first question? <laughs> first question is just use public key cryptography. You don't need an enclave. You, all you need to do is digitally sign content at your trusted website. Yeah, I guess the question here is uh, uh, if you trust the people that sign this uh, message, if you want to trust it, for example, this is an internal thing, you trust the, like the local CA, the CA can definitely sign the message. But if we want to use it like in the public network, who should you trust to sign this message? And because that guy can uh, claim he obtained this, for example, get this data from a flight aware, but actually he made up the data itself and still will sign it like, uh, like normal. You will have no way to tell this unless you trust it. Uh, that is why we use uh, Enclave to enforce the data is indeed from the trusted website. Why wouldn't just sign the message? That's the third. Uh, that's the third option. Just like Google can uh, set up their own uh, service, and uh, th th this is indeed possible. And the uh, the problem of this is, as I said, the fragmentation and also confidentiality. Mm, your query will go to Flataware, and so you cannot. Uh, uh, if they are not using like similar techniques, uh, I don't know how you can get a confidentiality guarantee. So sorry, actually, let me interject. I don't know if we got an answer to the second question there. Uh, oh, it's yeah. It's also one of my questions. So, I'm, so the, yeah. So I mean, okay. the question of you know, in terms of resiliency of these data feeds, are you essentially imagining that there's going to be I'm totally rewording it, uh, so apologies there. I mean, a sort of shadow blockchain, you know, backed on SGX. Um, is that what's going to be needed in order to, to maintain the properties that you want? Yes, uh, uh, we haven't, uh, we actually didn't uh, uh, go all the way to a shadow blockchain, but we indeed think about uh, this uh, resilience issue. Uh, a naive idea is to just uh, set up multiple instances of Town Choir and uh, run a sort of maybe presenting consensus or just do a majority vote and uh, stuff like that. Uh, that is indeed an important uh, question because people are still having concern that uh, SGX might be compromised uh, at some point. So yeah, that's uh, actually one important section in our paper. Uh, the solution you 
gave for privacy, that only hides the query, but not the response to the query, right? Yes, uh, exactly. That's a good question. Uh, let me see if I can, yeah. So the query is not hide. The query is the thing that's leaked. And also, the, there is a potential timing channel, if you will. The, the time that you deliver the response also leak information. So this is just a, a rough idea. If you want to get like full guarantee of your privacy, you need to first of all uh, deal with this timing in channel issue. And uh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, does Towncryer give any guarantees on when the data was fetched? Sorry, can, can you repeat? So uh, do I know when you fetched this information? So for a lot of information, it might be important when you fetched it. Uh, so is there any time included in the, in the proof or something? Uh, yes, uh, the timing guarantee we, we have is uh, SGX has a trusted time source. So uh, not, a, not, a, not an absolute timing source, but uh, it has a trusted relative timing source. Uh, so uh, we have a trick to allow user to verify the local, like the local time that this SGX machine believes that he, it is in, and uh, we, in addition, put a timestamp to the query or to the response, uh, so a uh, user can verify the time that this website is fetched. Okay, but then the user needs to continuously verify because the OS might re reset the enclave all the time, so. Um. User need to uh, have some, uh, do some like a, a face off leap here. Uh, you need to verify, it. if you are paranoid, you need to verify it before you make, a, before you issue a query. Uh, if you get this query back like soon enough, you you don't actually need to verify in between. Uh, maybe we can discuss this offline. Okay, there is something I didn't get. You mentioned that uh, the Mac, which is uh, used in TLS, is not transferable, right? So, but essentially, the entire TLS session is deniable for the server. So if uh, the way you use it uh, with the enclave transforms the TLS session into something which is undi undeniable, then there must be something broken. It's a, it's a bit scary to, to see that any transaction from a server can be transformed into an undeniable transaction. I'm not sure I get the question. Uh. So what did you mean that the Mac which is used in TLS is not transferable? Sorry, I, I guess we, we can discuss it offline. Okay. I couldn't hear it clearly. Uh, the answer to that previous question is no. There is, it, 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 it's still the case that a server can deny the transaction. It's just that we're trusting the uh, SGX enclave to honestly report on what the server did. The server could still, can, you can still generate the max and everything. Um, but I have a question about the, um, the, way, the basically, uh, let's say you have a website like FlightAware, and all of a sudden it reports that the flight's delayed. It's actually, that's a glitch. Um, for whatever reason, they entered it wrong, and five minutes later they correct it. In the real world, the, you have like the courts if, if people can't come to a reasonable conclusion about some, the, the state of the world like this. How in town crier do you deal with data sources that might glitch? Mm. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Off of uh, off the top of my head, I actually don't know. I guess yeah, maybe we can discuss this offline. Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, let's thank Fan again. Thank you.